most of the time, video game developers go out of their way to make you listen to the voice acting. Because, I mean, come on, they've paid for the booth, they've paid for the actor, they've paid for the actor's sandwiches, and those weren't cheap sandwiches. You think Troy Baker accepts a cheap sandwich? Get real. Sometimes, however, deliciously, a game will bury a line of dialogue so deep that it's almost impossible for most players to find. A weird little bit of Easter egg voice acting that you have to go to great lengths to hear. And as a reward for your efforts, they're usually funny as <laughs> Here are seven hilarious lines in video games most players will miss completely. But we're spoilers for God of War Ragnarok. The others are kind of fine. Welcome to Megaton. Have yourself a nice visit, partner. Just because there's no civilization anymore doesn't mean we can't be civil. We just can't be isation. A great post-apocalyptic spot to be civil and sociable with your fellow survivors is Fallout 3's Megaton, a bustling township where the locals busy themselves with selling food and drink, doling out side quests, and uh, worshipping an undetonated nuclear bomb in the centre of town. We kneel before it and ask that Atom call us to aid him. We pray that out of our meagre bodies, he will create new life. Uh, huh. So, uh, is there like a bar somewhere, or...? There is, however, one megaton resident you won't be shooting the breeze with, and that's this guard who stands watch high above the entrance to the town. Why? Because there's no natural way of getting up onto this railing. Which leaves only unnatural ways. Fire up Fallout 3's console command menu, enter the forbidden code that turns off object clipping, and you can float hackily upwards towards and onto the inaccessible platform. Up on this remote perch, you discover the name of Megaton's loneliest guard is Stockholm, and you wouldn't expect an NPC that is not accessible to have any voice lines, of course, let alone voice lines that are a joke. The more time I spend talking to you, the less I'm spending watching for raiders. How the hell did you get up here anyway? Did you see the dude floating around in the sky and then landing right in front of you and then talking to you? Well, that was me. Whoa, why are you doing this? Uh, what did I do to you? <laughs> you don't remember. How about that code? You remember that yet? I don't know the code. Ah! In Deathloop, you play as Colt, a man who wakes up with no memory of the world around him. To be honest, sounds pretty sweet. But one thing he's apparently supposed to know after waking up is the code, specifically the code to a door that will let him explore part of the island, Black Reef, as shown by these mysterious floating messages. Son of a... I don't know any damn code. Ah, okay, well, that's helpful. This being a game made by Arcane Studios, Colt's next job is obviously to find where in the world someone has made the grievous security mistake of writing an important code down for anyone to find, and enter that code into the door. But if you're a particularly attentive fan of long-running video game in-jokes, then you might be tempted to try the famous four-digit code hidden in a number of games dating back to 1994's System Shock. That famous code is 0451, and if you do enter it, Colt will react when it fails to work. Uh, old habits die hard. This implies Colt remembers nothing about the world around him, but did play System Shock at some point. Man of taste. How about yours? How long have you been nannying? Um, not long. I actually not, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. Um, I'm having a hard time with this, I gotta tell you. How long, how long have you been doing this? Spider-Man vowed to be a hero for all New Yorkers, but we have to think he made that vow before he actually met them. Because the NYC in which Spider-Man 2 for the PS5 is set is absolutely packed with unhinged NPCs chatting total nonsense to each other, spouting conspiracy theories, hassling Spider-Man about the finer points of his superpowers, and fully expecting an on-the-clock superhero to stop everything for a high five. Go, go on then. Oh no! <laughs> you can see why he spends a lot of time on the roof, can't you? Most players will only catch brief snatches of civilian NPC chatter as they swoop and glide through the game's many adventures and side missions. 
But for a lucky few, this game offers one particularly standout piece of dialogue. Sorry, I just got out of work. The dialogue is only accessible if you're lucky enough to find these two nannies, who as far as we can tell, spawn randomly. If you hang around to listen to a conversation as remarkable for its length as it is for its contents, this is what you get. Unless you grew up with a bunch of brothers and sisters, yeah. who has this kind of experience? Right. Unless you have kids of your own, you really don't. You're kind of just, you know, we all just learn on the job. Yeah. We don't come I, with instruction I'll manuals. I'll just go ahead and tell you more because I feel like an open book in front of you. I've okay. never even really held a baby before this job. I mean, I really, it's just, it feels foreign AF to me, you know? Uh, so, can you, can you just give me, like, some pointers, maybe? Keep the baby alive. Oh, yeah, that's Keep, keep that's the baby funny. clean. Oh, yeah. And um, make sure when you change the diapers yeah. that you, this is, this is key, okay, so this will change uh -huh. your life. Use some of that petroleum jelly. I'm so sorry, we're putting gasoline on these children. No, 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 not but not gasoline, oh. petroleum jelly. Don't put gasoline on baby. Wow, this nanny knows all the hacks. The nannies continue to speak at staggering length on subjects such as baby wipe warmers, cloth diapers, and the applications of coconut oil. I would not use coconut no. oil because you don't know if the baby's gonna have any allergies. Oh. But gas is uh, fine. No. It's not gasoline. Oh. Spider-Man, maybe web sling that pram out of there? I've got a bad feeling about this nanny. In an interview with Wired, voice actor Krizia Bajos, who voices the gasoline-obsessed nanny, says the conversation was completely improvised and said, it's a testament to Insomniac and how detailed they are, how much they care about making a whole world and an in-depth game that's not just the A to B storyline. No, 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 we don't do that, that, that anymore. We don't do, th we don't do that anymore because that can cause asthma. So no more baby powder. Wow. Well, that's as maybe, but forgive us if we want to take a break from picturing babies slathered in gasoline to maybe hang out somewhere else for a while. Hey, I wonder what this typical New Yorker has to say. He's my baby, I love him, but sometimes I just want to, you know, just throw him out the window. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's obviously a joke, a joke, a joke, a joke. It's a joke, it's a joke. It's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke. It's just a joke. <sighs> no, it's just... <laughs> Okay, forget Craven, Spider-Man. The infants of New York need you. What are you doing here? I'm in the middle of some serious right now, O'Neal. I could use some help out there. No way. Are you kidding? Do you know how long it took me to come back here to talk to you about this? You could have just called, you know? You know when the characters in a piece of media say the name of that piece of media and the audience goes, ooh, they said the thing? Yeah, well, Tango Gameworks noticed. See, in The Evil Within 2, they snuck in a hidden line for everyone who gets excited about that sort of thing. On his adventure through the haunted mine palace known as Union, hero Sebastian meets Liam O'Neill, a technician who would definitely not survive among all the horrible monsters out there. Although he becomes an ally, he stays in the safe house you meet him in on account of not wanting to be ripped apart like the rest of his team. From there, he gives you helpful advice over the radio. Let's pair up our communicators. At the end of this chapter, there's a boss fight against a boss called the Harbinger, who, oh no, is actually O'Neill gone wrong. But if, out of curiosity, you decide to put the boss fight against a flamethrower-wielding Liam on hold and instead backtrack all the way to his safe house, an excellent hidden line of dialogue is your reward. Are you coming with me or not? I told you I wasn't going to leave this place. It's f evil out there. That may be, but there's evil within, too. Oh, they said the thing! We're not sure what our favourite thing about this is. The stupid pun on the game's title, or the fact that when they turn to face the viewer, Sebastian's face is not actually properly looking into the camera. It, yeah, Sebastian, the, the fourth wall's over here, mate. Hi. All right. Through the greenhouse. Gears of War is not a series that spends much time dwelling on peace, but occasionally it does show you what these cube-shaped soldiers get up to in their spare time. Come on, Dom. Armor up. I've got crops to take care of. If we don't grow it, we don't eat it, remember? Cube-shaped character Dom there, attempting to explain to Marcus Phoenix the importance of cultivating plants and the serenity that doing so can bring. You f up our tomatoes, you assholes! I mean, relative serenity. That was Gears of War 3, setting up one of video gaming's oddest hidden lines ever. Fast forward to Gears of War 4, and you're now in control of JD Phoenix, Marcus's son. In Act 2 of the game, which involves paying a visit to Dad who is enjoying retirement on his family estate. Wonder how the old man's been keeping.
Welcome home, James. Not a DIY fan, I take it. When all heck breaks loose, JD, Marcus and pals fight their way through Dad's greenhouse. And hey, looks like Marcus has taken a leaf from old Dom's book. Or a whole vine, in fact. They're gonna mess up my tomatoes! Now, for many video game developers, this callback gag would be enough tomato-based comedy to include in your game. But not so for Gears of War 4 developer The Coalition. Because while 99.9% .9 of players will breeze through this area into the rest of the game, the 0.1% out there who stopped to destroy every single tomato in the room are treated to this hidden monologue. If monologue is the right term for a speech this foul. I don't know how long I've worked on this f***ing house alone. You know what it's like being a f***ing hermit? Fixing a house? There's no Home Depot out here, you f tomatoes. They f*** my tomatoes up! God damn it! Add that to the f list. God damn it. Those are Doms, for Christ's sakes. I grew those from Dom seeds. F those are Doms, goddamn seeds, for Christ's sakes. I'm never gonna have a f good sauce again. I can't make Dom sauce. F you guys. It's bull. F Damon Baird, you're a cock. Is it over? Now, for many video game developers, this would be enough tomato-based comedy to include in your game. But destroying all of Marcus's crop also unlocks a unique grenade, Dom's Toms. The real miracle here is that there are any levels in Gears of War 4 after this one, considering how long they must have spent programming all of this tomato comedy. Mir, did I do enough to prepare Atreus? The lad survived bloody Ragnarok. I should think he's as prepared as anyone could be. God of War Ragnarok is an exciting axe-throwing adventure that is actually a game about a dad dealing with his son going through puberty. Throughout the game, Kratos is very keen to impart important lessons unto his son, afraid that he might grow up and make the same mistakes as his once perpetually angry dad. I am sorry. Don't be sorry, father. Be better. By the end of the game, Kratos is ready to let Atreus go off on his own adventure to save his people, the Jotun. Son, you are ready. And supporting Atreus on his journey is Angraboda, a fellow Jotun Atreus bonded with in the Ironwood Forest. Are you trying to cheer me up? Yeah. Is it working? They're fast friends, and there's definitely a hint of an adorable little romance there that can only come about when you've both fought together against one of your gigantic grandparents. <laughs> Aww, classic love story. However, after Kratos says his goodbyes and Atreus goes off on his adventure, Kratos is still worried he's not taught Atreus enough. Once you've completed the game and the credits have rolled, if for no particular reason you wander back to Atreus's bedroom, you'll hear Kratos voice his worries to Mimir, his bodiless belt charm of a friend. Has he prepared Atreus for dealing with emotions other than anger? To survive, yes. But to love. Brother? Angraboda. Does he? Oh. Fortunately, while Kratos missed giving this lesson, Mimir gave Atreus some solid advice. I did my level best to teach him the ropes. Then you taught the boy to woo. To be perfectly honest, brother, I taught him how I wish I'd wooed. This hilariously cute and awkward conversation about Atreus's blossoming love life is such a great example of awkward dad Kratos, but is so easily missed. And fortunately for Atreus, is missed by him. I mean, can you imagine the embarrassment? <laughs> Receiving a personal message from Alucard from Castlevania is for many a dream. Just a hello, a thank you for being a fan, description of his perfect Sunday, how he keeps his porcelain skin so perfect. He'd make a killing on cameo, is all I'm saying. Prepare to be delighted then when I tell you that there is a way to unlock a hidden line from Alucard, Dracula's son and protagonist of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I've come to put an end to this. Better yet, you don't even have to be good at the game to access this hidden dialogue. You just need to still own a working CD player. So that just rules out everyone then.
Being a PlayStation 1 game, Symphony of the Night came printed on a classic PlayStation black disc, making it easy to distinguish from all the Spice Girls and Hanson CDs that would also have been littering your house in 1997 when the game came out. Fear not, I had my own reasons for destroying him. Nevertheless, if you did for whatever reason bung your copy of Symphony of the Night into a CD player and hit play, it'll hop you onto track two, where brilliantly you got the following sly hidden comment from Alucard himself. As you can see, this is a PlayStation black disc. Cut number one contains computer data, so please don't play it. But you probably won't listen to me anyway, will you? This good-natured telling off is then followed by a bonus bit of music. What a bop! Of course, it's nothing compared to what you get if you put an Ocarina of Time cartridge into a cassette player. Why did Nintendo hide the sound of a cassette player breaking inside their game? We may never know. Farewell then. We'll not meet again. I think we got all of the cartridge dust out of that. Luke, this is an antique. You've got to be careful with these things. Why do you think you could shove a whole game cartridge in there? To find Miyamoto's hidden messages. Well, no, that's not where you find them. The whole point of the disc is that, you know, you can put it in a CD player. That doesn't, it doesn't physically fit in here. Not with that attitude. <sighs> I'm very sorry to any tech heads watching at home. This I will make sure this is well looked after. My 1977 Sony Pressman, from which the iconic TPSL2 was developed. Reminder, don't let Luke use the tape cassette recorder. You know, the thing thank that you. people don't understand about Anyway, Pressman. thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please do give us a thumb up, some thumbs up. Please subscribe. Um, and if you want to support us even further, you can by joining our Patreon, where you can chat with us on Discord and ask us questions and such. Uh, but if you can think of any other hidden lines, because we found so many and we would love to talk about more of them, let us know in the comments below. Maybe there's some that we haven't even found yet uh, please do share them and uh, we've got way more uh, videos about fun little things that you can find in videos we love this stuff like finding all these little like little secrets little easter eggs um, and for anyone who gets to the end of the video here's a super special extra hidden line you're cool the year was 1970 luke no please Akio Morita was the thrusting young sony ceo destined for greatness 